Hi everybody, Sean O'Kane here with Chip SMA TV. We're here at uh, CDN Live in Santa Clara, California. Um, and we're in the Samsung booth. I want to let you know that Samsung's expertise in high volume logic process uh, manufacturing is enabling customers to quickly design exciting new chips at the most advanced process nodes. Calvin Lowe, Senior Foundry uh, Marketing Director, uh, joins me today. Uh, to give us an update on Samsung Foundry's 14 nanometer process readiness. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Sean. All right, good morning. Mm -hmm. So uh, where is Samsung in the qualification process for the 14 FinFET? Uh, yes, uh, our 14 nanometer FinFET uh, process has completed qualifications uh, since end of last year. Mm -hmm. In fact, a couple of weeks back, uh, we announced uh, in a press that we are in mass production phase, shipping products in volume uh, for 14 nanometer. All right. And when can we see products uh, on the market with chips designed mm -hmm. at 14 nanometers? Uh, actually, very soon. If you have followed a couple of announcements recently, we have products out in the marketplace. Uh, we are engaged with additional customers in uh, various market segments, including mm -hmm. mobile computing, mm -hmm. uh, graphics, uh, also in the uh, infrastructure and uh, networking space. Yeah. You know, collaboration is, is always key and it's, it's always talked about, but it's important with Samsung. Um, so how, how does Samsung work with its customers to ensure uh, silicon readiness for the 14 nanometer FinFET? Okay, so we definitely believe in the word collaboration. In fact, uh, we will expand on that. We believe in relentless collaboration, right? right? It is ever, it's increasingly important. It is ever more important because right now the intricacies of design, ED8 IP and process technology is all coming together. Uh, we are doing some of this collaboration work way in advance, maybe two to three years prior to bringing the technology uh, into production. Mm -hmm. uh, we are here at CDN Life, uh, for example, our partner Cadence, uh, we have been working with them on EDA solutions, mm -hmm. uh, DFM solutions and PDK solutions. Uh, additionally, we are expanding our effort in the IP uh, area with uh, Cadence. Uh, completing all that and providing a total solution to customers is very important these days, mm -hmm. uh, to large customers, to uh, the, uh, I would say the next tier customers. Right. Uh, they're expecting the foundry to do more than just process technology. They expect the foundry to provide a total solution. Yeah. You know, we've in the past talked about the 28 nanometer process. It's a very long lived process, mm -hmm. but um, how is Samsung expanding uh, the 28 nanometer portfolio to meet customer needs? Okay, a very good observation because uh, that is pretty much the market consensus. Mm -hmm. uh, they have told us that uh, 28 nanometer will be long lived probably because of uh, cost reasons. Uh, it is a technology that uh, does not use double patterning, so mm -hmm. it avoids the uh, uh, increase in cost uh, when uh, this multi-level patterning is used. Uh, so what Samsung has done, uh, uh, just for example, uh, back last year we announced the addition of RF into our 28 uh, high key metagate technology. Mm -hmm. And then towards the mid of last year we announced and launched FDSOI together with uh, ST as a partner. Uh, since then, uh, we have acquired a number of customers. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have uh, uh, brought the ecosystem together. Uh, mm -hmm. That is very important because again, like I said just now about Total Solution, for FDSOI now, we have a complete ecosystem supporting the process technology. Uh, from the areas of substrate supplier, because FDSOI is yeah. a unique substrate, all the way to the uh, design chain. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And to continue that, that conversation about FDSOI, <coughs> um, automotive, IoT, networking mm -hmm. are, are important segments for FDSOI. But which application segments do you think will benefit most from the FDSOI? Good question. Uh, the key value of FDSOI is really the extreme low power uh, characteristics of the technology where you can actually uh, run the products at the much lower power supply. Mm -hmm. right? So that translates to prolonged battery life. Uh, so that immediately uh, suits the IoT segment, and in particular the wearables, mm -hmm. right? uh, where, for example, a Fitbit device that I'm wearing, uh, it, space is a constraint, where you know, battery, you can only fit a small form factor battery. Mm -hmm. uh, as a consumer, you like to have this device to be, uh, uh, to be on uh, pretty much a, a day, a week, a month if possible. So silicon technologies that provide uh, extreme low power uh, characteristics would be of high value. So FDSY is a good fit in that area, right. and also for cost reasons. Uh, you mentioned automotive, that's also a very exciting segment. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, many of the players are now going into automotive because of the high uh, Kager uh, potential. Uh, FDSOI has another unique, uh, I would say, benefit where it is uh, reliability uh, is enhanced uh, from FDSOI. 
so that suits the automotive segment's uh, requirement pretty well. This is exciting. Yeah, so it is. Yeah. Good stuff. And I really appreciate you taking time and being here at, at CDN Live 2015. <laughs> and uh, so I, I look forward to see you and talk with you again. Sure. Always a pleasure, Sean. All right. Mm -hmm. For Kelvin Lowe uh, with <clears throat> Samsung Foundry, my name is Sean O'Kane with Chip Estimate TV. We'll see you next time.